Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all the ships at sea. The Bill Crane Sports Report with Gary Patterson is back again. Like we and never left. Like we never left. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, we've got the Patriots to yeah. talk about. Lucky us. Lucky us is right. Yeah. Do you know that? I can't believe how lucky we are as sports fans in New England. It's true. Um, you reflect on what we've had. Mm -hmm. The great players that have played for the Bruins, Bobby Orr, Phil Esposito, um, the Bruins have always been good sometimes, mm -hmm. not great sometimes, uh, and they're falling on hard times lately. Yeah. Uh, and they're, quite frankly, not a whole hell of a lot of fun to watch right now. Not at the moment. Yeah, at the moment. Yes. Uh, the Celtics, always interesting. Yes, they are. And uh, they are building a team uh, that is uh, going to be heard from. Indeed. Yep. It's a long-term view. That's right. Yeah. Long-term view. The Red Sox are always in the middle of Competitive. it. Competitive. Yeah. Very competitive. And uh, when they're going good, they hog the headlines. Yeah, still do. Yeah. It's summer, you know. The Patriots oh, are back. In the class by and themselves, too. That's right. And the Patriots are now taking the headlines back. Yeah. And I would suggest to you, that if the Red Sox were playing the Yankees and the Patriots had a warm-up game, head there wouldn't head. be much difference as yeah. far as the uh, headlines are concerned. Yeah. Because are the Sox playing Saturday night by chance? Because the, the Patriots are playing, I'll be on TV Saturday night, prime time. Um, do you know what? I'll be willing to bet you if the schedule maker knew this in advance, yeah, it would it, be yeah. a day game. Yeah. But it's away, though, isn't it? I know uh, they're home. The Yankees are coming in this weekend. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. So I they'll be at Fenway. I'll be willing to bet you anything. I Fox you. is said, or oh, we can we can change the schedule around. I'll bet You'll you the Sox will be game. playing yeah. at four. I'll be bet my you guess. anything you're right. Yeah, on Fox at four. And then they got the Sunday night game. That's right. Oh, Again, I ESPN. think. ESPN, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the... Patriots, when we look at, oh, I forgot mentioning the Celtics, but well, you mentioned I did a by. little bit, but yeah. I didn't go back to Red Auerbach. Yeah, Bill Russell. Uh, and that was an era that we'll never see the like never. of again. Never. And we'll never see the like of Red Auerbach again. 11 championships in 13 years. Unless. You ain't going to see that again. Unless he's running the football operations <laughs> up at, uh, Gillette, because Bill Belichick is the closest thing he to is. Red Auerbach that I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, there was a great story uh, in Gene Conley's obituary. Joe Fitzgerald, the best writer in town, mm -hmm. wrote about Gene Conley, and he liked Gene Conley a lot. There's Conley lot, was lot a personal like guy. Classy guy, yeah. And uh, what a tough guy. <gasps> oh, yeah. Man, I'll tell you what. He, when he stepped out on the court, watch out, he was as hard as nails. The league was much more like that in those mm -hmm. days than it is sure now. Sure was. Yeah. Um, and uh, Conley uh, was one of these guys that our back would, well, he'd play him like a fiddle. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Cut into the chase of the story. They had Wilt the Stilt coming in Saturday night. So during the game on Thursday, our back started playing head games with Conley. Wouldn't put him in. Put him in and yanked him out and making him mad. So, and then he ignored him when Conley wanted to talk to him. And then they had a spat and everything. And Red did it deliberately. Yeah. So that Saturday night, when Conley got on the floor, he was 
fully amped, and he's got his belt and Will Chamberlain around from pillar to post. Yeah. He could do That's that. That's a classic red move. He could play him like a fiddle. Yeah, yeah. And whenever he looked down the bench and said to Luskatov, in there, yeah. The crowds would erupt in Boston. <laughs> but and and just but Belichick has his way of doing it mm-hmm. too. What a brilliant, brilliant guy. Yeah. Um, Could be the goat. Yep. Well, I've got some things here to talk about football. Okay. Um, but first of all, I wrote a couple of things down here out of order. Okay. Toxicology tests show Tiger Woods had five separate drugs in his yeah. system. Uh, Some well, of them very and, potent. Yes, Xanax and, uh, and some of this stuff too bangs into each other and it uh, doesn't work well with the other pills. Yeah. And um, that was a bad that was, scene. Yeah. No doctor prescribes that combination no. of drugs. No, no. But you know what? He did a very irresponsible thing. He did. He absolutely did. We are forgiving so much of this. Yeah. Guys out there not taking responsibility, not behaving properly, and driving while zonked on all kinds of crap. And then the defense is, I'm hooked on it. It's the fault of the manufacturers. They made yeah. it too strong. It's the fault of, the fault of the doctors. They made it too available. Right. God, did anybody Where's ever suggest go look yeah. in the mirror? Right. There's the guy. Yeah. Well. It, was, it is sad. It is very, very sad. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to start in here because I put some. Oh. <laughs> okay, here we go. I put this one in. Okay. Former Red Sox pitchers are one, two among the save leaders of the International League, Triple A Baseball. Is that right? Yep. One pitcher has 27 saves and one has 12, and they are one, two. In the International League. You don't have any guesses, do you? I know. Pedro Beato, who we had, he's in the Phillies organization I don't now. Remember we that. had him up for a couple of cups of coffee. Okay. A string bean right hand. He also pitched for the uh, Mets. Huh. That one. And Edward Mojica. Edward Mojica? Yeah. He's got 12 saves in the international. Holy League. mackerel. Who's he playing for these days? Um. I think it's Rochester. Wow. Yeah. Edward Mojica. <laughs> After this was written, he yeah. got released. <laughs> <laughs> and one other thing on baseball, and then we'll get back to football. Joe West yeah. was asked who the biggest complainer was in the major leagues. Yeah. And he said, it's easy. It's Adrian Beltre. Is that right? Yeah. He got a three-game suspension. From Rob Manfred, the commissioner of baseball. For saying that? Yeah. Can you imagine that? Talk about PC. What the hell have we become? Wow. I mean. A three game suspension? Yeah. For saying something everybody. I bet you Joe West said something to Manfred. Yeah. I think this is Joe's last year. I think he's 65. Yeah. I think he's got to go. I think he probably should. That's Not a big a, Joe West guy. No. Uh, well, he had a pretty wide strike zone. And, yeah. Yeah. Pitchers like him, I guess. Yeah. And you know what? The players seem to like him, too. Yeah. He was, you know what he does in the off season? What? He's got a country and western band, and he's the lead singer. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Ah. Uh, well, Super Bowl winners odds. Okay. I like the Patriots. Patriots. Got to put up 100 to win three and a quarter. Wow. Yeah. Now, I don't know, but that looks pretty good. It does look but pretty good. But you know, good. you're one injury away from... Uh, maybe. Yeah, but... Uh, 
Depends what you think of the other teams behind you, right? Yeah. Um, now, the second team, I would not have picked in second place. But, and that's the Packers. The Packers? Yeah. 800 no bucks. Eight to one. Yeah. Huh. The Raiders, a thousand. Ten to one. Okay. Seahawks, Steelers, and Falcons are bunched at twelve to one. I don't believe any any of those three teams. No. No, the Steelers are the best yeah. of the bunch and they're getting they old. Are. Yeah. Uh, then you got the Cowboys at fourteen to one. Probably with all those teams, they're going to be jumping up. In, uh, they're, they're building, it seems to me. They, they, they're going. Yeah, they're building, and, mm. uh, you know, you hate to say it. I really hate to say it, but, you know, Ezekiel Elliott went for six games. Yeah. So he's only, he's only going to have 10 games under his belt when the playoffs get there. Yeah, yeah. Could that may, that might mean that he's left. going to be fresher than ever. That's what I'm saying. The legs, yeah. The Giants are at 18. I don't see that. 1,800. Yeah. Um, Eli Manning, I suppose, will go in the Hall of Fame. But, boy, he's not yeah. my idea of a Hall of Fame quarterback. No. He did win a couple, though. Yeah, as he we, did. As yeah. we painfully know. Yeah, and, and so he's got to go. Yeah. The Now now we go off the, off the charts. Okay. The Giants are 1,800. Uh, then there's a bunch of other teams. Then there's the Bills at 15,000. 15,000. And the Jets at 30,000. You not? Would you be willing to wager 100 bucks on either one of those deals? No. no. Nope. Nope. Hold it and put it back in my pocket. Thank you. Hang on to it. Buy scratch tickets. There were some interesting numbers, though. If you try to, if you try to exclude the Patriots... You know, yeah. <clears throat> okay. What so if. the Patriots aren't in the league. Yeah. Did you really think the Packers are the best team in football? Yeah, I'm surprised by that. I mean, I love the Packers. Always have. I go back to Paul Horning. So who do you think challenges them for that spot? <sighs> you know, is it Pittsburgh? Is Cow it the Raiders? Cow Cowboys. Is it the Cowboys? Yeah. In which case, it sounds like the Cowboys, in your mind, are undervalued on that list. If if you said to me, "I Billy, you got to take a hundred bucks and you got to wager it on somebody," the Cowboys it seems to me that's the best value play out there. What was their number again? Fourteen to one. Fourteen hundred. So yeah. hundred bucks in the Cowboys, they win the Super Bowl. You get fourteen hundred. Yeah. That's probably a pretty good. That's a fair bet. I yeah, mean, that's I, I think it's better than a, the an Packers. enticing bet. I don't think I think it's better than the Packers at eight hundred. Yeah, certainly better than the Seahawks at yeah, twelve hundred. I don't buy that. No, and I don't buy the Steelers or the Falcons. Uh, I think the Falcons have been wounded. I think they have too. I think they'll be a playoff team, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> can they actually win it? I don't so, know. jump to another subject. Yeah, you. Are the general manager of the Miami Dolphins. Wow. Weather's nice. It is. Yeah. Well, except when it rains. <laughs> <laughs> do you pay Jay Cutler $10 million, Or do you... Listen, Matt Moore pitch, pinch hit last year yeah. and played well. Right. Now, is he a starter? I don't think so. But hell's bells. Jay Cutler at, at $10, 10 million? Million. Yeah. Uh, uh, give me a break. You can pick a couple more guys up off the street. Now, he has history with the coach, Gase. That's exactly right. right? And Gase keeps standing up for him yep. publicly saying, I know what I'm talking about. You don't, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody else looks at Cutler and says, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't pay Cutler $1 million, never mind $10 million. Well, I tell you what, I left him right up in the booth if it was up to yeah. me. Yeah. I don't think he belongs there either. No, probably not. But Here's another one. Can you just go away? Please. Yeah, please. And by the way, uh, Ryan Tannehill is having the full boat for surgery. Yeah, it's too day. bad for him. And you know. um, this is one of these deals where uh, he may end up with the brace forever. Yeah. And if that, the part of his game is he's a big scrambler. He's yeah. a strong runner. Yeah, break out and, of the pocket. Uh, yeah, this could. Uh, 
This could really put a shadow over his entire career. We'll see. Yep. He's never reached his peak potential yet. So That's right. I like the kid. I like the kid, yeah. too. But he's never reached never, his never. potential. Of course, now by the same token, um, this is not exactly, uh, exactly a band of champions yeah. that's been put together yeah. down there in it's Miami. True. That's true. Mm-hmm. The NFL, you yeah, really got to love them. They're yeah. as bad as Rob Manfred. <laughs> the head linesman position has just been renamed to Down Judge. Down Judge. Down Judge. To more accurately depict the responsibility of ensuring correct down and distance. Really? Oh, oh yes. That's a job? Yeah. Oh, huh. and to eliminate the gender-based description. Wow. Huh. Yep. We felt, we felt the need to do that, huh? Women all over the country are obviously losing sleep over the fact they still call that uh, position a linesman. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So we've fixed that. So that's what they were protesting about. <laughs> <laughs> Babe Pirelli passed away at the age yeah. of 87. Yeah. Um, Starred in the early days of the old AFL when... Worth remembering. Yeah. Yeah. A decent guy. Yeah. Um, had a couple of good years for the Patriots. Yeah, I was just um, a kid. Yep. Yeah. Played for the uh, Green Bay Packers. Yeah. Um, and uh, he played also for um, the Oakland Raiders, the Cleveland Browns, the New York Jets, and oh, got around. the CFL's Ottawa Rough Riders. Oh, I didn't realize he had been up in Canada. And he was the backup. To Joe Namath when the Jets won the Super Bowl. Yeah. So he got a ring. Yeah. Pirelli was born in Rochester, Pennsylvania, not far from Namath's hometown of Beaver Falls. Both Pirelli and Namath played under Coach Bear Bryant in college. Yeah. Pirelli at Kentucky and Namath at Alabama. Um, So, um, from everything that I've been made to understand he's a very, very decent guy. That's what I always yeah, understood, too. And um, Gino Capaletti uh, put something out in the press, too, that you know, the, he was a big friend of his. And yeah. Really going to miss him and all that kind of good stuff. Was he still in this area, do you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, well, no, I, I'm, you know you're what? Going back I, to Pennsylvania. I you thought I knew that, but um, I think it m- might have been in the other um, obit, uh, but it was the organization, the Patriots organization, that uh, put out the uh, obituary. Okay. Um, anyway, Ezekiel Elliott suspended for six games for domestic assault on his girlfriend. Yeah. Owner Jerry Jones of the Cowboys maintains there's nothing to this story. That's what I understand. He's yep. not happy. Adam Schefter reports that he is furious with Goodell over the suspension. Interesting. Yeah. Um, He's been a Goodell supporter overall. The NFL now supposedly has a six-game minimum for domestic assault. Okay. Now, Jerry Jones sits... On the board of directors, uh, he's he is a powerful insider. Yeah. Rules committee, yeah. whatever. And did he not notice this going through? I mean, it's as though he's been blind. So it's a minimum, side. and so they could go higher if they felt yeah. it was appropriate. Yeah. Um, and I think it, I think it jumps to a full season for the yeah. second defense. Does it? Yeah. And if that doesn't straighten these guys out and calm them down, then there's no hope. Yeah. If they're that stupid, the amount of money they make. Yeah. Um, by the way. I think they should make the six, eight. Half yeah, the season. Half the season. Yeah. Well, right. I wouldn't object to that at all. Yeah. Second, um, you're gone. What kind of a guy hits a woman anyway? A scumbag. I, a scumbag is right. Yeah. yeah. Um. I, I, one of my younger sisters, um, 
kept it a secret from the family, but her boyfriend was yeah. whacking her around. Happens a lot, uh, and, unfortunately. Uh, but when Tommy and I were in our 20s, um, when she was having the problem, so um, and it was my one of my other sisters that told me. So Tommy and I went over the house. Uh, uh, well, well, actually, we called up and found out when he was coming to pick her up for their next date. Mm -hmm. and we waited outside. <laughs> we said, uh, I understand that uh, whacking the sister around a little bit, are you? No, oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, well, that's good. I'm glad we straightened that out because Dad just had a new garbage disposal put in the sink, <laughs> and Tommy and I were going to shove you down it. Okay? Bear that in mind. Okay. And he went and got in his car and left. <laughs> that was the last we saw of him. Good. Yeah. But I, I, yeah. I don't uh, I don't understand what news. that guy does. Bad news. Uh, what do we make of the entire Jimmy G soap opera with Jacoby Brissett? Uh now, there's a, a story out there, because there's stories out there. They, all these guys sit around and make them up all day. But percent may be cut. Yeah, I've heard that rumbling as well. I don't believe it. I don't either. You know, it's I mean, possible, but I don't I believe it. I suppose it's possible, but um, does Brissette you know, have trade value? Could they, they try they, to could get, they get a four for him or something? Or? I don't know. They could paid you, a three for could you, you know, If the issue is the roster spot, could you just get him through to the practice squad or would somebody grab him? Don't think he'd, I don't think he'd get through. I don't think he'd get through no. either. Somebody would no. grab him. Um, just to stick it to the Patriots. Yeah. They'd, they'd oh, yeah. Grab him. yeah. And plus the fact that they'd say, well, all right, look at who's in front of him. Uh, yeah. He's a big, strong kid. Uh, let, let's find out what he's all about. Well, let's sign him. For the next time we have to find the Patriots, play the Patriots, yeah. and see what we can figure out. Get and, the playbook. Yeah. Um, Jimmy G? Yeah, I th my, uh, my own view is that he, he is just the ultimate insurance policy. I think Bill is going for it this year. He's going for it. He wants to win this year. He's not worried about five years down, Holden, three years down. He does down win this year. Will he franchise him um, next year? I think... I think he might, I but I think too. if he does, he'll make a decision on Brady. I think I think he'll he'll talk Brady into taking four thousand four million for the year. Yeah, and and one of those deals. Yeah, it's possible. Because Brady wants to win just as much as. But Brady I don't think I don't think that's a showstopper for Bill. I think Bill just he's worried about this year. Yeah, and he. And you can see they're huge favorites to win. It's all about getting number six. And then we'll deal with Jimmy. And we'll deal with Tom. But that, the, to see the moves the focus, that he has made. He's built the team. They're he deep. is saying, watch out. Right. Because I'm going for the whole enchilada. Yeah. Yeah. I think the uh, from what you're hearing from training camp, I think the surprise cut, there's always one. Could be Coney Ely, the defensive end. They say he's had a terrible camp. I watched the exhibition game last week. Yeah. And I swear to you, on a couple of three plays that I was watching him on, it was like he was just going through the motions. Yeah, that's what they say. He's had yeah. a terrible camp. Now, they said last last night, uh, they said this morning, this morning's paper, that he did get a sack. And he also had a, a hurry on the quarterback. But then after that, nothing. Yeah. Well, we'll see. You know, there's always... The rap on him is he's uncoachable. Yeah. You have to show up for practice here. And yeah. when I mean yeah. show up, I mean That's you right. need to be yeah. playing hard in practice every day here. It's, this is not a place where you can lollygag through the roof week and then show up ready to play Sunday. That's yeah. not good enough here. You don't drop in and suck it's up not good enough here. or That's something. That's not the way they do it. Other guys. Right. No. So he may be on his way out. Could be. He and could they've be. got some depth along the line. Now, 
two schools of the Isle. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to skip over to something else here, but two schools of thought, though. Um, the running backs. Yeah. Six running backs. Four slots? Huh? Four slots. Six running backs. Yeah. He loves Brandon Bolden. Special teams, right? Could yeah. Dion be expendable? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Uh, two schools of thought. One guy writes, he's playing them, showing him to other teams, hoping to get a draft choice in the trade. Or possible. he is giving them a lot of work because last year he wasn't in shape, in tip-top shape. His knee wasn't totally perfect. The, usually they don't bounce really back all the way until the second year, and he wants to see what he's got. Yeah. I would like that much better than cutting him. Yeah, I like the player. I do. I like the player. I mean, he can embarrass you. You know. He catches the ball in the flat or gets a pitch, a toss, and he's out there and – I mean, he makes grown men cry with some of the moves that he's got. Yeah, you get down to those last few roster spots, you know. There's guys like him. There's guys like Devlin, right? He's going to keep Devlin. He's going to keep Devlin, right? Uh, a third tight end. Are you keeping a third tight end? Yeah. And what, which one of these kids is it going to be? Uh, and, the, and the answer is, you, you generally, you, yeah, you're going to keep a third tight end. Yeah, he'd love to keep right? Gronk's brother, but... So that goes to which one, happen. you know, there's about three guys that are all, we're all late picks or undrafted picks. Hollister, the kid that had all the catches in the first game. Do you know? One of those guys is going to make the team. I think Hollister is going to make the team. Yeah. yeah. So can um, he play special he, teams? He really, he really looked good. Yeah. Um, you know, the Patriots are like a peach tree loaded with ripe fruit. Yeah. And the other 31 teams are standing under the tree waiting for the fruit, fruit to drop. Yep. You know that the Patriots are not going to be able to stash anybody on the taxi it's squad gonna be hard. that's any good. Yeah. Or that's a prospect by some right. stretch of the imagination. Um, the Forbes list of the most valuable sports. Uh, Franchises is interesting. The Cowboys topped the list at four point two billion dollars. Wow. Huh. New York Yankees are next at three point seven. Now, now the Cowboys that includes the stadium, right? Yeah. That's yeah. This is the whole enchilada. Yeah. You know that stadium's a couple billion right there. Uh, Man U, uh, Manchester United, is third. Three point six nine billion. Mm. Barcelona and Real Madrid, uh, Major League Soccer teams in those uh, two countries. Um, then in sixth place, the New York, uh, the Boston Patriot. Woo! New England Patriots. In sixth place. Sixth place at three point four billion dollars. Three point four billion dollars. He bought it for what, three hundred million or one hundred eighty so, million or something? It was a ridiculous price, right? And all of this started with his dad uh, recycling cardboard. Yeah, the craft mills. Yeah, that recycled cardboard. Uh, after that, the Knicks, the Giants, a bunch of people, and you got to come all the way down. To 17 to the Red Sox. 17. 17. Wow. 2.7 bill. 2.7 bill. Then okay. you got to go down to 30 to find the Celtics at 2.2 bill. 2.2. Celtics yeah. are over 2 billion, huh? Yeah. Wow. Wow was right. Good investment for those guys, too. I think a lot of that is the money coming back from the league, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cash cows. Oh, yeah. Well... The Jets cut linebacker David Harris. And we signed him. 33 years old, a 10-year vet that missed one football game. Yeah. I can say to you with all honesty that when David Harris was coming out of Michigan, I wanted, this, I wanted them to draft that kid. And it was 
it was doubly bad because they didn't, and then the Jets did. Yeah. And Belichick is obviously feels the same way yeah. as you because he's been, he's been watching great, him for years. He's been a great professional player. Yep. And um, the Bel Belichick uh, couldn't get him fast enough on a contract. Yeah. So he should be here. They're going to have to cut a linebacker too. You know, well, Land you know, I think Roberts I, might get. Landon Roberts Eldon, could be in trouble. Eldon, Eldon and Roberts. Yeah. He's undersized. Yeah. And um, the uh, guys that uh, watch the practices and uh, watched uh, the exhibition game and all that, the, the, the junkies. Yeah. Uh, have been saying that he's really biting on some running plays. Yeah. He yeah. made the team off his training camp last yeah, year. He did. Right. He may very well in the preseason. Not make the team he may not. because of training camp yeah. this year. And Harris being around. Yeah, I don't know whether you know Eldon Roberts could end up on the taxi squad. I don't I think don't he was going to. I don't know whether he is really and truly going to excite a whole hell. He's undersized. Yeah, he's got coverage problems. I mean, he's good on the run. Well, you know, I would, I would try to get him on the taxi squad. Oh it's yeah. Good oh, listen, depth. he knows the system. Yep. And you can plug him in. Yeah. Uh, will they make a movie of the theft of Tom Brady's helmet and shirt? I don't know. Because I, if they do, who will play Tom Brady? <laughs> and who will play Giselle? Any uh, ideas? Uh, I'd say Tom Cruise will play Brady. Okay, I went with Jim Parsons, who is oh, Sheldon gosh. Cooper Sheldon. on TV. <laughs> uh, and for Giselle? Uh, Giselle, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Um, I picked uh, Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah. Huh, that's an interesting choice. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get some attention here okay. for this. Yeah, okay. Um, That'll do it. And for Bob Kraft, we'll use Bob from Bob's Discount Furniture <laughs> Store yeah. ads. Uh, oh. Pete Morelli is the best referee in football. Okay. I think so. I'm not sure, but I know he's considered to be pretty good. Yeah. He's my choice. Okay. Duly noted. Yeah. Um, Michael Floyd, briefly a patriot, is yeah. in trouble again. Where is he? Uh, he's with Minnesota, but may not be much longer. Oh, really? Now, you know, you say to yourself, how stupid can you get? Uh, with him, you can get pretty stupid. Well, boy, this this takes the cake. He's under house arrest for 96 days for this being uh, three times over the legal limit in Arizona. Yeah. That drunken driving. Yeah. So... He's 90 days into his 96-day service, and he fails the alcohol test. Is that right? He's going to take it, like, daily. Yeah. How can you be that stupid? I don't know. So now he's back in court, and they don't know what the hell to do with him. Wow. I think I know what Minnesota's going to do with him. Yeah. Yeah, see you later. See you later. Warren Sapp. Uh -huh. is donating his brain for medical research after his death at the to the uh, Concussion Legacy Foundation. SAP44 said in a statement, he started to feel the effects of the many hits he took in his 13-year NFL career. He took some hits. Well, and he's got a hell of a lot more football than 13 NFL yeah. games. He played college. He played high school. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was a runner. Yep. Um, I do remember him taking some ferocious hits, though. In the he's NFL. undersized. Yeah. He was short. He, um, he didn't shy away. I no, mean, he, he was fast, too. Yeah. There was a lot of high-speed contact. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, he was a tough player. He would. He'd try to break the tackle. Yeah. Yeah. Football in America now, I think, is its number one sport. Mm -hmm. But and it's a huge business. Without being overly dramatic, 
lives are being affected, men are being incapacitated, they're dying, and families are being torn apart. I think the worst is yet to come. Oh, I do too. I think yeah. the game is in trouble long term. When I say long term, I'm talking a generation yes. or two. Yes. You know. There's so many ex football players have yet to be affected or debilitated by this brain damage. But it appears that they are being affected in their 40s now. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's all coming. There's nothing on the horizon to slow its progression down or better yet stop it. Yeah. So. When I was in you, high school, we were taught to lead with our helmet. Oh, absolutely. Lead with your helmet. Yeah. That's what you did. And if you didn't, you right. were screened at. Right. So you are the new NFL commissioner. Yeah. What are you going to do? You know, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think. I know you can't stop this thing. <clears throat> yeah. I think. Dead. And say, oh, well, that's it. We're ending the season. Yeah. We're taking two years off when we study this. No, I think that you, you've you taken some steps. I think where you need to really pour some money into research is equipment. The helmets. Yeah. You know, is this current. You know, I always used to say, you know, what you have hard helmets hitting hard helmets, and that's the shock at the brain moving forward and snap back and all that. It's because of the shock of... So, what if you had soft helmets? What if they were just like really thick foam rubber that absorbed the force? Do you know you're reading my mind? Through the foam rubber. Yeah. And the bra and you didn't get it as jostled around. I, I question whether the, the fact that it's hard surface hitting hard surface oh, gonna have guys creates so much... Yeah. So much of that. I mean, it's the snapping, right? It's the whiplash. Of course it is. It's the whiplash that causes when in the brain, you in your head. you abruptly stop, all the stuff starts bouncing around. In your head. Yeah. Right. Now, a study was done in hockey, and they said the safest helmet is a soft helmet. Really? The guys refused to wear them. Because you look like a sissy with a poof ball on your head. Well, get over it. No. You want to uh, be a professional player? But I guess player? it is a semi-hard helmet with a poof all over it. Okay. But it was, it's big. Yeah. Well, yeah. Does it work? Yeah. Apparently, it does. Now, if someone was going to exercise real concern about safety, wouldn't you think they'd go back to this and say, you know what, guys? You're all in this together in the NHL. So you're going to wear the damn things. Yeah. So shut up. Yeah, or, you're going to have to negotiate it into the collective bargaining. Yes. Right? Well, now there's another ball of wax. Yeah. The union. Yeah. When you have something that you think works, is a big improvement safety-wise, and you've got to kowtow to the unions, yeah. and you've got to say, well, now, come on, guys. And they're going to say, well, up to pay another half a million dollars a piece. And, yeah. Yeah, because we have to negotiate this. That's wrong with that. But I think for the NFL, when it gets to the NFL, that's where, that's what they need to be doing. They need to be funding research into the equipment and the heads and how... Is it a soft helmet? Is it, you know, and you're talking about a grant to Stanford or somebody who sure. can, has the people to really Absolutely. understand Scientists, this. Scientists, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, I agree. You know, you could get a pretty exhaustive study for $10 million, I'm of, sure. Of course. Yeah. Right. You but know, they don't do it. The other thing, too, is late hits. Yeah. We don't want to take that out of the game. We... We want the hard hitting. That's what people pay to right. see. And right. Do they pay to go see some 44-year-old guy laying in the hospital, a vegetable? I mean... No, the reality is they forget about him as soon as he retires. That's right. That's exactly right. And the team may forget about him as soon as he gets hurt. Yeah. They don't even have their contracts guaranteed. Nope. No. And that is a... You know, the National Football League, the owners... Uh, 8,000 million times smarter than the players. Right. And the players' representatives 
I must be being paid off They're terrible. by the NFL. They're terrible. They've got to be. Worst representation I mean, ever. Non-guaranteed contracts. Right. And the owner says, well, we don't want to lose any money. And yeah. Marvin Miller's looking down snickering, yeah. saying, you got to be kidding He's me. He's got to be laughing his brains out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, to those owners, the reality is not playing football on Sunday is not an option. No. And right? not having so, hard-hitting, violent football. Do you have the people and do you have the strength in your union to sit across the table and stare them down and say, this is going to change, or there will not be football on Sunday? Well, you know, you've got an awful lot of guys. You've in got the fran- National Football League. Yeah. That 800000 900000 a million dollars a year looks like a huge pot of gold. Right. Considering their uh, other job uh, possibilities are working in a car wash. Right. While pumping gas, or for bucks those that can read or write, maybe a paper route. Yeah. I mean, those people want four or five or six years in the league at a million or a million two, yeah. figuring that'll set them up for life. And then their uh, uh, entourage steals it all from them, and they end up living under a bridge in Houston. Or they get hurt and they get cut. That's right. And once they get hurt, they can't pass a physical. They can't play anymore. Right. It's over. It's, it's, a, it's upsetting. So it is, a, it is by far the worst deal. It is. By they, far. Take a look at the In the other, most dangerous sport. Yeah. Now, take a look at the other way around. Uh, I don't say it's the easiest sport to play, but it's pretty clean as basketball. Yeah. And you are just showered with money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the players have got one hell of a deal. They sure do. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Baseball has guaranteed contracts. Mm -hmm. And hockey is still somewhere in the dark ages. I can't. Look at what these guys are making in the European soccer leagues now. They're making $35, $40 million. Unbelievable. Yeah. And it all all comes from the league, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is, it's really interesting. And yet the NFL, and you know, and you, you, you had the numbers for the franchises. Bob yeah. Kraft bought the Patriots for what, a couple hundred million bucks? It's worth over $3 billion. And look at the real estate he's got up there, too. And how many of the guys that fell under his ownership are already crippled, are already in the poorhouse, quite frankly? Well, have no um, idea what the future holds. Bob's, yeah. Bob's got a, a couple of billion in his pocket. You're absolutely so, right. I'll tell you a guy that is very concerned about that is Ted Johnson. Yeah. Ted Johnson had a neck about that oh, wide. Yeah. And, you know, um, he he tackled helmet first. Yep. And he was Tough one of guy. the real tackling machines that ever played for the yes, Patriots. Yes, he was. He had a ton of concussions. And, and now he's got real concerns yes, about his future, and he knows he's got problems. Right. That's why he retired that one year Mm -hmm. and then came back again because he couldn't afford to stay retired. Right. Tell me something, Gary. Are you as upset as I am with the degradation of the English language, the swearing, the cursing, and the general coarse behavior? Whatever happened to decent behavior and proper manners? Or is it just inevitable that the savages will prevail. It's not inevitable, but it's been a result of the explosion of social media, all that stuff, the internet. People can now be nasty while being anonymous. And that, for a lot of people, who maybe aren't the most secure people in the world. It emboldens them. It emboldens them. Yeah. They get a charge out of it. And it's too bad because you, civil. You, I think you have nailed this. Yeah, decency is Out the fading window. fast. Yeah, and yeah. it's because you can be indecent anonymously, in my That's view. Right, no responsibility. Right. Yeah. Here's another gem from Johnny Gomes. Xander Bogart was on first base, and there was a fly to deep right field. 
Xander went back to first, tagged up, the ball was caught, and he was thrown out easily at second yeah. base. Johnny said, well, you can't blame Bogey for going, but that wasn't the time. <laughs> what? He got the memo. <laughs> Jeez. He got the memo. He oh, wants, God. He wants more, more game night pay. Oh. oh, man. He wants to be in the Nesson rotation. Um, Austin Carr. Yeah. Kids look good, huh? He caught he's, everything that was thrown to him. Yeah. Um, he's not fast. Nope. Um, he looks like a patriot, though. Yeah. And there were some bloggers on the yeah. internet. Did you see that stuff, no. the racial stuff? No. I didn't well, know. he's half black. Okay. Okay. And the ra stupid racist humor uh, was... Well, uh, they couldn't find another white receiver, yeah, so they a got a half a. Uh, That's what happens. What? This is what we just talked about with social media, yep. that people can be idiots. What place does that have in normal human Civil discourse? Civil discussion. None. None is right. Honest to uh, God. And these guys on talk radio think that they're on the leading edge of... Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Shock radio and ah, uh, the Pats signed Keonta Davis, a rookie free agent, a two-time All-American. Must have been a little All-American at Tennessee Chattanooga, and they plan uh, looking at him as an edge player on the D line. Six four two sixty. Really? Yeah. Now, if he was a two-time All-American. Why wasn't he drafted? Mm, something wrong. Why wasn't he in another camp? Why was he looking for a job? I don't know. There's, not a, there's an answer there, though. There is. You're absolutely right. And um, you mentioned uh, a young man here a moment ago that may be part of the reason. Uh, they're looking for some protection on that line. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, maybe they're looking at a couple of guys that aren't going to be with the Patriots, yeah. that are going to be cut. Um, and that fellow you just mentioned, he probably would pass through waivers to the taxi squad yeah. if they actually like I think so. Talent. I think yeah. you're right. Um, of course, they always have the injury route, right? They can take some of these young guys and they can suddenly get injured in the third game, and preseason game, and go on injured reserve, right? Especially when the other teams have finally got their yeah. rosters. So they're not, you don't use them this year. You get them into the offseason program. You see what you got of it next year. All right, Mr. General Manager. Yeah. You've got Mike Gillisley at running back, Rex Burkhead, James White, Brandon Bolden, Dion Lewis, DJ Foster, and LaShun Daniels. Yeah. So you got four, I guess, uh, locks. I get three locks, I guess. Gillisley, Burkhead, and White. I don't see anybody upsetting them. I mean, yeah. And I think you get uh, Brandon Bolden, who is such an excellent uh, special team. Well, you know, that's, he gets on the team because of special teams, not oh, no because question. of he's a running back. And no, so, yeah. you know, he, this could be his time to go. Uh, he had a, a I think good. you're keeping Dion Lewis. Yeah, well, unless, they, unless they're looking to trade him, which they could be. Now they get a problem here, though, when it goes deeper than that, and that says DJ Foster. Yeah, Arizona State. This kid. kid's got some skills. Yeah. And uh, they would love to find a way to hold him. He would pass through, I think. Do you really? I think he might. Ah, I can see him as part of the falling fruit that... Uh, Could be. Could be. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he's on the team. I think you're afraid to put him on the team. I think they'd like to cut him and put him on the taxi squad. Yeah. But I don't think they're going to play him in the exhibition games and let it, the rest of the league see him. Maybe uh, not. He did yeah. have a fumble the other night, didn't he, the first game? Uh, no, that was. Um, uh, I thought it was DJ Foster. Maybe fumble. it was. Yeah. yeah. 
It was. Um, I pay attention to him because actually I have a friend in Arizona whose son is friends with him. They both huh. went to Arizona State together. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I guess in a perfect world, they carry five running backs with well, Brandon Bolden. Now, now Slater is not practicing. I guess he's got some leg problems. I wonder if he's going to go on the pup and they'll keep Bolden. Well, you know, he could... Some somebody could go on the uh, two return injured reserve, right? You get to have one spot or maybe two that you can put somebody on injured reserve, but they come. You have they the right back, to bring them back after, after the tenth game, something like that. Yeah, eighth game, something. So, you know, is there a candidate for that? I don't know. Sometimes you almost wonder if you could put Gronk on that to keep him healthy down the stretch, <laughs> right? What? Could we somehow either light a candle or uh, go in the woods and sacrifice a pine tree or something yeah. to keep him healthy for the year? Wouldn't it be something to see it'd him be, it'd be for fun. the whole year? It'd be fun. Uh, but we did prove we can win without him, finally, in the postseason. Yeah, I know. I and, know. you know, Brady's got so many weapons now. That wide receiver core. Uh, there's not that many. Um, players that are in danger of being cut. Now, Glenn Gronkowski um, is a fullback. He's gone. And they're going to keep Dalvin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe they pass Glenn Gronkowski through to the practice squad. squad. He might, he'd probably go through. No, I think he would. Yeah. Just to keep keep his brother happy. Keep, um, keep him out of the bars. Wide receivers. <clears throat> um, boy, I'll tell you. Loaded. You got Amendola, Brandon Cooks, Edelman, Chris Hogan, Malcolm Mitchell, and Matthew Slater. Now, if they take Slater and do put him on the physically unable to participate, yep. uh, that might be the slot that enables him to keep Bolden. Um, but it leaves you one short in the receiver department. But hell, he doesn't play receiver anyway. Yeah. But you left somebody off that list. How many you got? Five, five receivers? You got Amendola, Cooks, Edelman, Hogan, Malcolm Mitchell, uh, and then on the bubble, Austin Carr and David Lucien. Uh, and, of course, Matthew Slater. So... Slater's your number six receiver on there. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly what he is, the number six receiver. Yeah. And he'll play uh, five teams. downs a, yeah. a, a year. We won't know. be throwing him any fly patterns this year. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so I wonder, uh, th I suspect there's something here behind his injury. Yeah, I think it's very good. Yeah, somebody's going to go on, somebody's going to end up on that injured reserve can return yeah. list. Yeah. Right. Um, the offensive line looks pretty darn solid. Um, they've got uh, Connor McDermott and Ladrian Waddle on yeah. the uh, bubble. Yeah. Uh, according to the paper, uh, Waddle was brutal. Uh, brutal. Yeah. Uh, all night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he could go. Yeah, uh, he could go. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he would probably pass through too. Yeah. Just worry, they're not they're just not that deep a tackle. They haven't That's been right. deep a tackle for That's a while. Right. That's right. And, and it, you know, it was a blessing when they stuck Cannon out there and he was actually good. Cannon proved last night against JJ Watt. Yeah. Hey, he shut him down. Um on the defense, uh, you know, it's pretty much cut and dried. Yeah. Jonathan Fringy is on the bubble. They have him on the bubble as yep. a linebacker. I think Roberts is uh, on the bubble, too. I wouldn't want to see Fringy cut. He's not a bad football player. No. He might have to, though. He might have to. You're right. You try um, to pass him through. Maybe he gets through. Maybe he doesn't. And then after that... Uh, the D-backs, I mean, Justin Coleman, Kenny Moore, and DJ Killings are on the bubble, but none of those three have really stood out. Uh, and Cyrus Jones, uh, 
He's he's, they got to make him the team, but, uh, you know, one more fumble. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. He needs to make – he's been – he's had a rough rough night in a rough camp playing corner, okay? So he has to – he was a an electric returner at Alabama. Yeah. He was electric. Number two draft choice. Yeah. Belichick doesn't cut them. And a big part of that is the fact that he – you know, he was really in, – in college, he was a top receipt, returner in the whole country. Yeah. So it would be nice if he could – Convert yeah, that and not have balls bouncing that, off his foot. And yeah, like, and he's the kind of guy that he can catch lightning in a bottle, you know? Yeah. He can do things for I think you. Bill's going to hold on to him somehow. I, you know, I think he will, too. Yeah. But, boy, I'll tell you something. This kid, if he ever puts it on the ground a couple more yeah. times, uh, he'll be on a Greyhound bus. Right. Uh, headed out but of town. There's no way he would pass through waivers to get to the taxi squad. I don't think Somebody, so. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, so, tell me the truth. Nineteen and nothing. I think it's possible. It's going to be a zoo if they actually try to get there to do it. And <laughs> uh, right. So we'll see what happens. In some respects, you almost say you almost just soon drop one and get all that nonsense over with. Because what I really, what we all really want is number six. That's what we really want. Yep. That you know, nineteen and the- zero. Be okay, but now a quick quiz to end up the night. Eighteen and one doesn't cut it. No <laughs> failure. The number five, top five states for opioid overdose deaths in the U.S. Yeah, are, well, New Hampshire's on that list. They're second. Yeah. Uh, try another New England state. Maine, Rhode Island, Rhode Island. They're fifth. Patriots are down in West Virginia, mm-hmm. number one. Is that right? Yep. Wow. Kentucky and Ohio. Kentucky and Ohio. Others. A recent study at Harvard Medical says the villains are the doctors. I, b- I believe by that. By prescribing opioids carelessly and in great quantities, i.e., a tooth extraction should be no more than four pills. But yet, they show doctors prescribing as many as 100 pills. Yeah. Um, that's and, I, and, I, and you know who's standing right behind those doctors are the drug companies. There's no question about it. You're absolutely right, and you've nailed it. Yeah. Holy cow. Well, one more thing, and I think I can squeeze this in. Something that we're ignoring in this country is long-term care insurance for the elderly. Yes. The folks from the Depression, from World War II, and from Korea who built and defended this country um, are are being bankrupted because of a lack of affordable elder care insurance. Yeah. We're going to get serious about that. Yeah, I agree. It's a big subject, though. It it is. It's big. It's big. It is, indeed. And on that note, friends, we've done the Red Sox and the Patriots the last couple of weeks. We have got to get to the Celtics. Yeah, we'll get to them next time around. I think the Red Sox and the Patriots will still get some of our Yes, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Yeah. But listen, folks, enjoy being with you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.